Ah, we've come to the end of it. This video concludes my reviews of the holy trinity of Nicolas Cage 90s action movies. That would be The Father, The Son, and The Holy Spirit. It's been fun, I'm not gonna lie. I've enjoyed revisiting these, so let's do it. Welcome to Con Air. So Con Air was a Nicolas Cage action movie, came out June, I believe it was 2nd, 1997. So Con Air actually came out before Face Off still, that was the summer of Cage. The premise of Con Air is so ridiculous, yet so amazing. When I saw the trailer, I was like, this is gonna be the greatest movie ever. There's a prison plane transporting a bunch of prisoners described as housing the worst of the worst. We're talking Cyrus the Virus, Diamond Dog, Billy Bedlam, Garland Green, Nicolas Cage's accent. Nothing, I was just admiring your cage. And we're admiring this movie's cage, the Nick Cage. That was stupid, I'm cutting that out. But Nicolas Cage plays Cameron Poe. He was just a dude who got into a bar fight and then he kills this guy, defending him and his wife, and so he goes to prison. So he's a parolee hitching a ride home on this plane housing the worst of the worst. What could go wrong? Yeah, the prisoners take the plane, but Nicolas Cage is like, I'm a good guy, I'm gonna save the fucking day. And as for the cast, <laughs> there's so much cast in this movie. I mean, Nicolas Cage became a bona fide action star. He went from the science geek in The Rock and he was like, all right, now I'm gonna do that other thing. But you gotta give it to the dude. He just commits in this role. I hear he did a lot of his own stunts. John Cusack is also, he's just this likable dude who's, He's the good guy of the good guys. You know, you got the bad guys, and then you have dicks. Comini is one of them. I mean, this was Miles O'Brien, so this shit blew my mind. Well, you better start contemplating, because this is a situation that needs to get unfucked right now! I was like, ooh, Miles O'Brien's a dick. So anyhow, John Cusack in this movie had me from a little ruckus. This movie was actually my introduction to Dave Chappelle. I, I had not seen Dave Chappelle before he was pinball in Con Air. Also, I, I just read this. I don't know how true it is, but I heard he ad-libbed some lines or a lot of his lines in this movie. Regardless, the scenes he's in, he's not in it for long, but when he is in it, he does stand out. He does steal the scenes. Oh man, it smells like so much shit in your mouth. You told me you loved me. <laughs> Get out of my face. All right, all right. Yeah. And if we're talking about those 90s villains that I always gush about, John Malkovich and Con Air, He's one of them. Talk about taking a ridiculous movie and a ridiculous role in a ridiculous movie and just owning it. And there's something about John Malkovich's voice that already, he sounds like a psycho, doesn't he? He always kind of talks like this. He has this monotone voice and there's something about it that just seems a little off. I just love him as Cyrus the Virus. Make a move and the bunny gets it. I actually like everything when they're in the plane. So here we go. The movie always starts to slow down for me and I'm like, oh, I wouldn't say it loses me, but it's not as interesting when they're not on the plane, when they touch down on the ground. The plane gets stuck. Sure, there are explosions upon explosions. Not that it's not fun. <laughs> it's probably because of the soundtrack. That electric guitar. I mean, when that thing kicks on after Nicolas Cage is like, I'm gonna show you God does exist. Dude gets shot in the arm and keeps going, man. What a boss. It's your barbecue and it tastes good. <laughs> I love the lights in this movie. But it's the uneasy dynamic of everyone thinking, oh, Nicolas Cage is one of us. He's one of the bad guys. And Nick Cage is like, I'm totally not. I'm trying to find a way to screw these guys over and so the authorities can capture him. That's where it's most interesting for me. This movie does make you have to take leaps. I mean, leaps upon leaps. I'm not just talking about the end, which I'll get there in a second. When they go to Cyrus Grissom's old cell and he re-bricked the wall and there were all his notes in there and a bomb? There was a bomb. Who smuggled a Die Hard with a Vengeance explosive device up one of their orifices to get it to Cyrus Grissom in prison? How did that get there? That is the worst security, maximum security ever. But even when they find out that, oh, the guards are actually cons, and someone's like, those guards aren't guards, they're cons, stall them. <laughs> you want this one guy to go stall these armed cons? These aren't just convicts. You're sending him up to Cyrus the Virus alone to stall him? You just sent that man to his death. That, that's what that was. Oh shoot, Steve Buscemi. I, I gotta talk about Steve Buscemi. Cause dude just, it's perfect. Perfect casting. Again, I hear that they wrote the role for Steve Buscemi 
makes complete sense. So having him as this Hannibal Lecter type serial killer, who's actually the only one who has philosophical thought. I mean, of anyone in this movie who talks at all, Garland Green seems the most mentally put together, but we all know he's completely not. Now you're talking semantics. Funny enough, Garland Green doesn't really do much in the movie. <laughs> he's just, he's there. He's there to be weird, but he's just there. But that aside, if he wasn't in Con Air, Con Air wouldn't be as enjoyable because his insanity just, it works for this movie. Of things that just feel out of place in this movie, that scene where Garland Green sits down with the little girl and he's hanging out with her, that always did. I suppose the scene seems out of place for me because the setting seems out of place. Like it was a scene that they filmed after the movie was over and they were like, oh, we want a scene with Garland Green doing something, all right. Here, we'll film a pickup. Because they're out in this little airport, this airfield in the middle of nowhere, seemingly in the middle of nowhere, and then in the middle of nowhere, boom, there's this little trailer park. So as weirdly out of place as this scene seems, I do like the fact that it starts getting introspective on Garland Green's own perception of his mind. You look sick. I am sick. You take medicine? There is no medicine for what I have. Regardless, my mom saw Con Air on TV and they cut the scene where the girl waves goodbye out, so the TV version is actually much darker than the actual theatrical version. But yeah, let's talk about the end. So the end, they crash in on the Vegas Strip, which is cool, it's awesome. They actually crashed into a casino that was just, they were like, oh, we're gonna demolish this casino. <laughs> and like, wait, can we crash a plane into it for a movie, please? But there's this whole chase where Cameron Poe goes after Cyrus, and when I watched it recently, I was like, you're done, dude, you're home. L leave this to the police. Then again, he did threaten Casey Poe, so, you know. This time is personal. But after that, Cyrus the Virus goes flying through this, this overpass bridge and then lands into this construction zone. Not just a construction zone, it's like some evil conveyor belt smashing thing. It's like at the bottom of this thing, you're gonna find Joe Wanko the Lava Beast. But it goes from Vegas Strip to definitely not Vegas Strip. In the end, Con Air is ridiculous, has 101 holes in it, but it does have fun for it. It's still a 90s movie that knows what it is. Of the Holy Trinity and Nomina Padre et Filia Spiritus Sante of Nicolas Cage action movies, it's probably the bottom of the three, but it doesn't make it bad. I mean, it's bad, but good, but still bad but good. It has a strong villain, a hero with a solid moral code. It's fun enough for me to say whenever I watch this movie, I always have a good time. No alcohol required. All right, now I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon is no stranger to this channel in terms of sponsorship. Once again, I appreciate their support. And they are the slick, stylish, true wireless earbuds that started about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they give you some solid sound. Their everyday E25 earbuds offer six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. And as always, they come in a variety of fun colors. And Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet. They have no dangling wires or stems. And as always, personal experience here. They always stay in place, have yet to fall out of my head. Also, incoming hair comments. Yeah. And for all reasons listed, they remain my favorite workout earbuds because also personal experience, those Quarantine snacks seemed a good idea at the time. In the words of the great Saruman, I have work to do. So click the link below in the description, get yourself 15% off your order, and thank you once again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. And write us for Con Air or the Holy Trinity of Nick Cage movies in general. What's your favorite, whatever it is, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, ran out of breath. Click right here to say more.